coming up this weekend, a massive weekend, I think, for all environmentalists, all South Africans, everyone across the globe. In fact, the 3rd of March is World Wildlife Day. And today, as we head into the wild, we're joined by Monet Duplessis, the CEO of WWF South Africa, one of the world's most recognizable, respected, and I think powerful independent conservation organizations out there. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Um, thank you. I'm in awe of what you guys do from our brief engagement. You know, we, we obviously get to just see the highlights. We don't often get to see the hard work, the slog. The, the, the hurdles that you guys have to do, um, have to deal with on a daily basis, but you have such a golden opportunity with World Wildlife Day to plug into the mainstream, to get the world to take notice of where you are right now. How did World Wildlife Day come about and, and what is it all about? Look, uh, World Wildlife Day was uh, proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly. So it's a big global body that uh, decided that we needed to raise awareness on plants and animals across the world, uh, because plants and animals are not just beautiful things that inspire us, but they also are the building blocks of life. When I say yeah. building blocks, you know, the pop rivets in an aeroplane wing, every species, every animal, every plant is one of those rivets, and you take them out, something is going to happen. There's going to be far-reaching and devastating. And I mean, we've, there's, a, there's a big and emotional attachment to certain species, we know. Um, but this is about the overall bigger picture. And I'm so glad we've stopped on a beautiful big cat, one of South Africa's icons. This year's theme is Big Cats, Predators Under Threat. Where is our big cat population? I know there are so many battles being waged on so many different battlegrounds when it comes to big cats and conservation and keeping them in the wild. What is our population like in the wild? So, you know, big cats are under threat across the world. Tigers, lions, uh, leopards, all the large cats, snow leopards and so on, we read about these things. And uh, globally, there are only about uh, between 20 and 30,000 lion uh, left. In South Africa, we're talking about 1,500 adult male lions in the wild. So the numbers are low, and this is about 10% of what it would have been under uh, pristine conditions. Of course, a lot of pressure on, on the big cats, in particular in terms of habitat loss. Yeah. They're getting pushed into strictly protected areas. The human-wildlife conflicts outside of protected areas obviously are big and there isn't enough space for them to live. We've seen a couple of lions roaming into those human spaces <laughs> over the last couple of years, which has obviously created quite a stir. Um, big lions get a lot of the attention because they're big, they're beautiful, they create this media hype. Something that possibly doesn't is the unbelievably cute, and that's its downfall, pangolin. Are they the most trafficked animal on, on the planet at the moment? You know, pangolin are not well known to to most people, we don't, uh, many of us don't know they even exist. This is a little mammal that we're looking at here. Um, small mammal, soft underbody, but then with the hard scales on the outside. These animals, uh, there are four species in Africa, and they reckon that in the past decade, uh, over a million of these have been killed and uh, eaten and used for medicinal purposes. purposes. Yeah. Oh man, and it just looks prehistoric. It's, it's adorable, yes, but there's obviously something very unique about it and very unique habitats as well. Um, we're going to chat a bit more about some of those big successes that I hope you have the opportunity to, to stop and just take a breath and celebrate. We'll, we'll get into where the black rhinos are at the moment. Um, but we are talking about World Wildlife Day, an opportunity for all of us to take cognizance of where we are, where we've come from and where we need to be. It's my feel-good breakfast show. We are talking about World Wildlife Day, of course, coming up on the 3rd of the March, an opportunity for all of us to celebrate some successes and, I think, reaffirm our commitment, none more so than a WWF South Africa. And we've got Mornay Duplessis here just uh, filling us in on where we are, the current sort of standpoint of, of where so many of these running battles, and I don't know how you manage the situation when you've got so many front lines to manage, and I think one that obviously has stood out for the last few decades has been when it comes to rhino poaching, something that we have seen here in South Africa reach, go far beyond what, what should have been allowed. But there have been some amazing successes, and the, the black rhino, obviously the most endangered of the, the rhino species, that has been one of those major front lines. Where do we stand at the moment, and are we winning the battle, do you think? 
Well, look, I, I, I would not easily say we're winning, we winning the, the, the war, war, but there are battles <laughs> that we're winning. And some of the good news around black rhinos is that uh, WWF has since 2003 embarked on a black rhino range expansion program. And in this, what we're trying to do is to establish new populations. So to get ahead of things and to drop animals into new areas where they hadn't occurred previously. And uh, what happens in this range expansion program is that it, the consequence is that 10% of our black rhinos in South Africa at the moment are in these project sites. So most of the work happens before you actually put the rhinos into yeah. an area because you've got to identify the areas, you've got to get people to work together, communities, private landowners, and the state, and then to bring the animals in so that they can create new populations. I've heard a figure, 21%, a rise of 21% in population. Is this is This, this is in KwaZulu-Natal. So in the province of KwaZulu-Natal, 21% uh, increase in the black rhino population over the last uh, decade or so. There, in these smaller areas where you've got the, the, the private kind of connection, where you can tap into those, those funding models where there is an eco-tourism element involved, that, that would seem like an easy answer. When you get to an expanse like the Kruger National Park, which we know is one of our most precious resources and already established, we've got the space. Are we winning in that area? How, how are we approaching this in the, the Kruger? Yes. So Kruger National Park, of course, is a magnificent, large, uh, uh, wild, protected area. When we say protected area, you know, it's an overstatement of protection yeah, because the area principle. is so vast. Yeah. If you think of the Table Mountain National Park, that uh, even that park where people are walking and getting attacked, uh, we can't keep people safe from each other. That's tiny, yeah. Uh, so if you're talking about the vast expanse of Kruger Park, that's very difficult. Some of the work that we are doing there involves uh, scientific work, helping to guide the black rhino uh, scientific base to understand, and also to be able to predict where poaching uh, uh, attempts might take place, where the highest densities are, and to uh, juggle the manpower in, in response to that. Something that, that leaps off the page for me is community involvement. We need to take ownership of this, not just on a, on a big scale, but right on that, that grassroots level. And we're going to talk a bit about some of the projects that you've got going on that front. But you can let us know if you've had any amazing engagements with the wild here in South Africa. Please post some beautiful pictures. Celebrate World Wildlife Day. It's happening on the 3rd of March. An opportunity for us really to recognize just how precious this resource is in South Africa. It's my feel good work. I was just dreaming about that sandwich. There's a reason why they don't invite me to these record-breaking things when sandwiches are involved. Um, well, of course, we know that the 3rd of March is World Wildlife Day. have been having such an interesting discussion with Monet Duplessis, CEO of WWF South Africa. This is probably the, the highlight of your year. This is your Christmas, your new year. This is where you need people to really take on board what we need to do. And I think a big area where we can get involved is, is on the community level and you need it. You're going to need that involvement, that buy-in. Um, I'd love for you to talk me through the Keta project and Mangalane community and how that has, has really come to be the, the success there. Yes. So there's a very big project that's taking off uh, around Kruger National Park and in the southern parts of Mozambique uh, on the Kruger border on the Mozambique side. And uh, this is a very big joint uh, venture between WWF Mozambique, WWF South Africa, uh, Sandparks, uh, as well as uh, USAID, who are providing the funding. Keta, in the local vernacular there, means to choose. And basically what is happening, we know lots of rhinos are getting poached and killed, uh, increasingly ivory of elephants as well. And uh, in the process, what's happening um, is that uh, communities are getting in the crossfire of crime syndicates. And so as much as we want to protect uh, Rhino, we also want to ensure that people and their lifestyles, their livelihoods are not threatened. And so we're working very closely with them to Im help empower them and also to provide uh, socioeconomic alternatives because people in the Mangalani community down in southern uh, Mozambique, southern uh, part of Kruger in Mozambique, uh, is a very impoverished community and wildlife don't always mean good things for them. Yeah. You know, a destroyed crop, uh, a, a, a cow or a bull that's been taken by a lion or something like that. So there needs to be something that gives them the incentive to become the guardians 
of the wildlife rather than to become those who get tempted into taking illegal wildlife products. I think we often forget about how many rangers, how many community members get lost in this battle. And I'm so, so glad that we keep using the word war and battle because there are guns, there is a huge amount of funding going into this. It is a war. Um, it's a, you know, in any other context, it would be seen as a civil war. What, what do we need to do now? What, what can I do as a person to support WWF, not just on World Wildlife Day, but every day? What do you guys need? Yes, so when we talk about war, I just want to say that here we're taking the soft side with the communities to make sure that we de-emphasize um, the aspect of war and combat and rather that. get them to own and to become part. Protect, yeah. And, 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 and take care. So, you know, I protect is also a hard word. Yeah. What we need is for individuals who are watching the show to put up their hands and to say where, you know, to understand where the biggest pressures are on wildlife. Uh, organizations like my own and others all need uh, help in some way or the other and also then of course corporates would be very welcome to uh, throw their hats in the ring to help this uh, this flotilla of, of actors to do good in the wildlife sector. I love it. They've got projects that are working. They've got individuals working on the ground doing amazing things. I love the fact that we are now shifting gears to embrace what is ours. It's our wildlife. They are our animals. Our communities need to love and embrace and um, I think really take on board just how precious that is. Enjoy World Wildlife Day, sir. Thank you so much. Thank and, you and for much. the work you do every day. Absolutely amazing.